All right, up next, I think we'll remove the uh, bearing races from the uh, pinion housing. And you just get on the back side of it with a, uh, a blunt punch and tap it on either side. A little bit at a time. And she's starting to move. That's an NDH new departure Hyatt. There's some pitting in it. Again, it's not horrible, but it has but it has pitting. Anyway, so we've been over all that. All right, let's take the uh, the other one out. We'll use those to drive in the new bearings. All right, only thing left to do with this part is to uh, clean it up. Uh, this new, this O-ring right here will have to be replaced. And I have not tried to get that out of there just yet. The uh, pinion housing was seeping. This O-ring definitely needs to be replaced. But to be honest, I don't know where I'm going to find one. I have looked, but I cannot find one online anywhere. I mean, this one is still supple. It's not torn or anything, but it's gone flat. I suppose if you had to, you could just reuse it. You clean it up and reuse it if you had to and just deal with the fact that it seeps a little bit. Uh, and maybe just put a little sealant on it or something. But uh, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll try some more. See if I can't find, maybe if I just take the measurements and then find the manufacturer of some O-rings and say, hey, I need one with a measurement of X, Y, Z. So. I may go that route. Anyway, I'll have to keep looking. All right, I've got ourselves a uh, bona fide bearing removal tool. Let's see if I even understand how to use this thing. This is just ridiculous. It's like working a puzzle, really. That's upside down. Won't work that way. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Shh. Man, that thing is on there. I'm just being cautious. I don't want things to explode or fly apart or that kind of thing, you know. That's all, man, that's all. I don't want any carnage, you know what I'm saying? All right, I went and cut myself a little piece of metal and put a dimple in it with a drill bit. The tip of this puller here has got a ball bearing, but it's this is pretty small for the hole that's in the end of the pinion. So um, I just thought maybe I'd put a flat surface across there and, uh, you know, see how well that works. Why is that? Because it's a cheap piece of crap tool, that's why. Just an imitation of some stuff that is good. And this isn't. That's why it is the way it is. So quit your complaining. You didn't pay a whole lot of money for it. Let's see if that will not explode. <laughs> Keeps getting off center. Can't have that. Not going to have that. It's coming up, but it just keeps getting off center because it's a cheap piece of crap. Don't blame the tools now. You know better than that. That's like blaming the golf club. You guys know what I'm talking about. I bet your nine irons down in the pond somewhere too. All right. We got her off of there. There we go. 
NDH. These are the original bearings that came on the car in 71. They have to be. And one of my viewers commented today and said uh, maybe some maybe the uh, the rear seal was leaking and they replaced it. And they went in there and uh, didn't put things back together properly. I you know I don't know how true that is, or why you would even need to change the. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. But you get, there's some wear marks on that bearing. They're not bad, but you can see them. These lines right there. All right, let's see. Is that it? That is it. That is a naked pinion. Uh, all it needs is to uh, be cleaned up. And then uh, the pinion housing and the pinion flange, all those parts will get cleaned up before we reassemble this mess. I think right now we're going to move on to the differential assembly itself. All right, let's continue on in our differential disassembly. I think we're going to uh, get this pilot bearing out of the housing next. And we've got a big old um, C-clip or E-clip or whatever you want to call it. I wonder if my head's in the way. I don't know, who cares? All right, let's see if these El Cheapo C-clip pliers will work. Lobby dog. <laughs> Look at that. There you go, one C-clip removed. All right, I thought I was gonna be uh, clever and remove the pilot bearing or the straddle bearing, S-T-R-A-D-D-L-E, as it's known in the service manual. It does not mention a pilot bearing. It mentions a straddle bearing. So, and there it is right back there. There is no way to get that out of there. I suppose you could get it out of there by basically destroying it with a punch or something and just hammering it from this side, but there's no access over on, on that side, right? So according to the book, you know, the way you do this thing is you go ahead and just take this gear assembly out. And then when you're ready to remove the pilot bearing, uh, you'll see that um, you'll utilize this hole here where this bearing cap is bolted to this structure. And you'll put another bolt through there and a, a small metal plate on the back side of the bearing and you'll just screw the bolt in and it will push the bearing outward. And that's that's pretty much it. But it uh, looks like we're going to remove the uh, gear assembly next. All right, we're saving you the uh, gory details. Two soakings in evaporust and two episodes of wire wheeling later. <laughs> uh, we've got the uh, pinion uh, retainer housing and the uh, pinion flange with a fresh coat of brake caliper paint, because that's what I had. And looks like I got to put another coat on there because the primer is showing through. I uh, used engine primer, just stuff I had laying around because, you know, it's on the drive shaft and it's just going to get nasty anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But the inside is all cleaned out. Any rust, debris, and you know, so on and so forth, that's all gone now. Uh, same for this guy here and this surface. I cleaned that up with some 2000 grit wet dry and a little. Uh, WD-40. Also found the O-ring, which goes here. This part that slips up into the differential. See that channel right there where the O-ring goes. This is the original one, and it's basically flat. It doesn't seal anymore. There's one side's, you know, longer than the other. Here's a brand new one. I got this in from McMaster Car. This is the part number. The dash number is 253. Your size is 136.12 by 353 millimeters. I'll put the SAE or the uh, Imperial uh, measurements uh, in the video. Uh, but I uh, had to buy a pack of 10. <laughs> so that's just, you know, you couldn't just buy one. But anyway, here's a brand new one. And it uh, I've already test fitted it. It works fine. So whenever we get this thing uh, to a point where we want to put it back together, uh, that's what we do. We've got an O-ring. So I've also got other parts on order as well. I've ordered all the bearings and pretty much everything I need to rebuild uh, the pinion and the uh, differential carrier system from Rock Auto. And except for the crush sleeve, no one has one. I found 
a 74 K10 pickup truck, Chevrolet pickup truck on Rock Auto, looking through their database. And what I was looking for was what is the size of the inner pinion bearing? If I can find a vehicle with an inner pinion bearing, which is the same size as this one, then that means the shaft of the pinion is the same size as this, and it should match the size of this crush sleeve. Now, what I did find was that uh, USA Standard Gear for that 74 K10 had a bearing spacer and some shims. However, it was about that long, so my current plan or thinking is I'll have it cut down to probably some size, maybe a, a smidgen longer than this, uh, and then uh, shim it the rest of the way. We'll see what happens. But I think maybe I've got a solution uh, now for a crush sleeve. So, and which is really what I wanted to do anyway, was use a bearing spacer and shims. All right, more later. All right, you probably saw the uh, little tool here I got off Amazon uh, previously on the website. Uh, basically, this is a gland nut wrench. It's adjustable. You can adjust the little set screw right there and adjust the the size here. And this is going we're going to use this to remove the uh, the adjustment nut uh, on the uh, differential carrier set. Uh, these uh, two guys here will will screw in here and uh, grab onto that. But it uh, looks like we're probably going to have to lop this end off. We don't need it. We'll probably need to grind this end down a little bit to fit into the hole. Not sure yet. I need to, I can't get it up in there. It's too long. So I'm going to uh, cut this off. See if I can't get that in there. If it didn't fit, grind it down. Leave the threads intact so that I can screw it in here. And then if this is still too long, I can trim that down. Probably do a little welding, this and that. Anyway, a lot of tweaking. Uh, anyway, I basically took a cheap Amazon tool and I'm repurposing it for this old Cadillac. Um, I cut this thing in half and put it on a 45 because the fuel tank is right here. And this handle has to poke down this way because it's just, well, it's too long. So I've got some rather large uh, heat shrink and I think I'll put a coat of paint on this uh, to prevent corrosion and put a little heat shrink on that to uh, cover it up and make it look pretty. Uh, that's what i got going on. I'm going to finish modifying this tool to accommodate our service work on our differential on our Coupe de Ville. All right, let's uh, try to get this carrier set out of this uh, differential. I modif continued to modify this wrench I got on Amazon and uh, I had to lop off the little tips there uh, to get into that close quarters right in there so I can get a hold of that uh, adjustment nut. But the first thing we're gonna do is take this retainer off because that prevents the adjustment nut from turning. Just a little piece of metal there. All right, got the uh, tool back up in there and I've got to get it adjusted properly to accommodate the holes in the adjustment nut. My head's probably in the way. All right, after a couple of minutes of uh, fiddle faffing around, I think that might do it. We're gonna find out whenever we get ready to uh, loosen that thing. So up next, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, dial gauge set up. Uh, we're gonna set, uh, and we're gonna determine how much load we have on these bearings. Uh, so let me get that set up and I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll be right back. All right, so I've been studying the manual, trying to figure out the, uh, <laughs> the pictures in the book and uh, the explanations that they're giving. So in the original uh, manual, the GM tool, the Kentmore tool, uh, what they had was they had an extension that screwed into this uh, this hole right here on this bearing cap. Now this is where the uh, carrier adjuster nut uh, hold down bracket uh, was in place. So they've got a uh, an extension that went on the original uh, dial indicator gauge that screwed into here, came up this way around the ring gear, and then came over here and you would put a plate right here between the casing of the differential and this bearing cap over here. And you would, uh, you would set your dial indicator up. After that, you would loosen the two bolts on this bearing cap. And then you will get your spanner wrench in here on the adjuster nut between here and you would loosen it. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure in thousands how much uh, loading you have on these side bearings. And you'll measure that and write it down. And I'm assuming that when you, re, uh, when you reassemble everything, uh, you want to uh, maintain that 
uh, same amount of loading. Now, whether or not I'm going to be able to set that up, I don't know. I like to follow, uh, you know, the procedures that were in the factory service manual, as you know. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to do it. Uh, but if I can't, I may try to figure out a different way. And that may be as something as simple as making a mark on the adjuster nut and then eyeballing it. So that would be, the, I guess, the worst case scenario. All right, so here's the update here. I found a, uh, a tent stake and had a hook in the end. I heated it up and straightened out that hook. This hole here is uh, where this hole down for the tensioner bolt is a uh, 5 16 uh, by 18 thread. And so I went ahead and just, you know, <laughs> coincidentally, this rod would take that uh, level of thread. Got the old tap and die set out and put some threads on the end of this thing. And then I uh, heated it up and put a 90 degree in it and got about four inches here. So, Let's see, is it still hot? It's cooling down. And it took me, it's not the, it's not the straightest thing in the world, but the threads work. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a nut on here to tighten this down. So we'll, we'll uh, thread this in a little ways like this. And then I'll, I'll have a nut on here and I'll tighten it down so that'll be nice and firm. And over here on this side, I've got a, a big magnet I use for welding and just a piece of scrap metal here. And I've got it arranged on the back side of this bearing cap between the casing and the bearing cap. So this, I'm going to cut that off a little bit, about right there. And then I will attach my dial gauge to this. So I think I've got a good setup to go ahead and take this dial gauge reading of this side bearing load before we pull this gear set out of the housing. All right, enough of that. Uh, I changed my mind, basically. Uh, so we've got our rod uh, set up here on the uh, bearing cap and we've got it in place with a little set nut right there. And I was going to use a magnet and a uh, piece of metal here, but I changed my mind. I started looking more closely at the tool set used uh, by the original, uh, in the original GM manual. They had basically just a uh, 90 degree piece of metal here screwed into the casing with a couple of bolts and what they would do was come in here and set the dial indicator up like this position this just so slip that in there like that get it just right so i can so i have enough room to get it in there all right so after a little bit of a test fit i realized this is not going to work i've got to modify it once again so what i'm going to do is weld a piece of metal on this and make it stick out a little farther like that so that we have enough metal where we can grab a hold of it with the dial indicator. So basically what I'm recreating is the tool set used in the manual. And uh, I think I'm almost there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weld a piece of metal on here and I think then we'll be able to take our measurement. So the measurement we're taking here is the gear case spread. What is the gear case spread? The tensioning nut over here with the holes in it, when you tighten that down, you will actually see these bearing caps spread apart minutely. And the tolerance or the spread that you want to see according to the factory service manual is three to four thousandths. Once we reinstall this and we tighten this, that's the number you're shooting for. When you tighten this uh, nut on the, on the very end, these bearing caps should spread out three to four thousandths. We're going to measure what that spread is as we remove this uh, carrier assembly from the differential housing. So we're gonna set up our dial indicator um, and we're gonna zero it out. And then we're gonna release the tension on this side nut over here. And we're gonna watch what the dial indicator does. And hopefully it will say roughly three to four thousandths. That is the factory setting. But so let me go ahead and uh, get another piece of metal welded on this and we'll get set up to take this measurement and then we'll loosen our nut on the side. All right, I think I've got this thing uh, figured out now. I got a little piece of metal added onto my bracket. I've got it bolted to the differential housing. We've got our nice little extension arm set up here on the bearing cap on the right hand side. Got our dial gauge set up. This rod was a little too narrow for this uh, clip here, so I just put some tape on there to tighten that up a little bit. And we got the uh, dial gauge under a little bit of tension there. I can see it move that way and that way. And uh, we're sitting on zero right there. 
Uh, so the next step is to loosen the bolts on the bearing cap. So I've already cracked this one. It's loosey-goosey. Let's see. Yep, that's... And now I have to do the upper one. We don't want to disturb our setup here. Now we're going to hope our fabricated gland nut wrench actually works. We got the heater going in the uh, shop today, so if you hear something in the background, that's what that is. All right, hopefully this won't slip out. Man, I think it uh, did some stuff. Yeah, we got it to move. We got to reposition our wrench here. I can already see slight movement on the dial gauge. All right, let's see if we can give it another little turn here. Let's see how far we've come. Uh, we've come about one thousandth. That's pretty amazing how these bearing caps will uh, move depending upon this tensioning nut. If you are fascinated by this ridiculous nonsense, give me a thumbs up on the, uh, give me a like on the old video there and maybe throw a comment down below. It said take the tension off, so I'm just gonna kinda keep going until I feel like, well, the tension is off. Right about now, I wish I had this OEM wrench from GM. All right, we've come almost uh, about a thousandth and a half there. All right, so I'm gonna continue to loosen this off camera. It's gonna take a while, so I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, it said to uh, just loosen the uh, tensioning nut until the tension was released. So where did that leave us? So my needle was a little bit to the left of the zero, and now I'm about halfway between the one and the two. So I'm going to call that two, I'm going to call that two thousandths. Uh, the book says when you put everything back together, your gear case spread should be three to four thousand. So what does that mean? If this is accurate, and I tried my best, then that might mean that, that this gear case was a little loose, possibly. So we're going to write that number down, and we're going to take this measurement set up off of here, take our bearing caps off, and remove the uh, carrier from the housing. This setup that I have here is for sale on eBay, by the way. I found some of these tools on eBay, but really, it's just a rod with some threads on it and a piece of metal. So I just decided to make it here in the shop. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't hard. So that's what the adjuster nut looks like, that big circle with all the holes in it. All right, we got our uh, carrier over here to the bench. I uh, <laughs> forgot about the shim on the left-hand side. Fortunately, I grabbed it on the way down. Uh, you were supposed to pull it out before you pull the carrier out. And But it looks like it's in good condition. Looks like it's got some witness marks there on the flat side. The chamfered side goes towards the edge of the car, I think. This is 0.122 according to my uh, measurements. The ring gear. Uh, appears to be in excellent condition. No chips or burrs or anything like that. Let's take a look at this race for this side bearing. It has some similar type, um, I don't want to call it pitting, but it's wear. Um, it's somewhat dark, if I had to say so. 
not hugely. <laughs> it's got some wear marks on it, but nothing that I can, I can't, I can see them, but I can't feel them with my fingernail, so I guess that's okay. What have we got here? This is the, uh, the right-hand side, Timken LM104911, made in the USA. But everything's going to get replaced regardless. You know, it's a, it's an old car. Just taking a look at the, uh, this right-hand side bearing. I don't see any burrs, burn marks, anything like that. It's a little dark, but then again, so was the gear oil. Been in there a long time. I think that, you know, these bearings are fine. Appear to be okay. From what I was reading in the manual, this left-hand side race supposed to be a little larger than the other. Description is somewhat worn. There's some wear on this bearing race. It's been spinning, I think, inside there. Yep, it is wider. The service manual says the left-hand bearing race is wider. And that is to accommodate the shim, I believe. Certainly is. Part is LM104911-A. NDH made in the USA. This one is, now that's interesting. This one says Timken. This right hand bearing race says Timken. That doesn't mean it wasn't put in at the factory, I suppose. Timken LM104911. Yeah, so the left hand side bearing says LM104911-A. I'm assuming that means, hey, I'm the wider bearing, but I'll look online and make sure I get the right one because I don't have the right one, clearly, because I ordered set 38 for both sides. That's what Rock Auto said to order, but uh, you know how that goes. Sometimes the database isn't quite right. All right, set 38. Brand new from good old Temkin. LM104911 without a dash A, which is what I suspected. And nothing like the man that is so pretty <laughs> brand new bearings are so pretty okay so that's what i need to get let me go back to rock auto and get this race here on order and uh so that will complete our parts supply all right so i think the last bit here will be to go ahead and remove the pilot bearing uh which Surprisingly, you have to take all this stuff apart just to get it out. So let's go do that now. All right, I got a little piece of metal in between the uh, bottom of the bearing cap and the uh, top of the pilot bearing. Not cool, man. I knocked off my pinion shim. I kept it up here out of the way for safekeeping because that's like the only one in the universe. If you want a different one, you'll have to buy a whole new rear axle out of a junkyard. So I put it back up there so that it would fall down again, so. There we go, right into the oil dry, right where it needs to be. Where's my little piece of metal at? There it is. Well, that was just about the easiest thing I ever did, really. I mean, I don't know why people just don't do this every day. All right, there's our pilot bearing we just removed. It appears to be in good shape. I think the primary issue with this differential was it was just too loose. Disregard the oil dry that's caked in between the uh, bearings now because it dropped on the floor. <laughs> and there's a new one right there. And let's take a look at the part number. Hyatt, H-Y-A-T-T. -T. That doesn't say N-D-H, it says Hyatt. Hmm, so that must have been on the shelf prior to the merger of those two companies. Uh, 1581T, made in the USA. There you go. All right, folks, I think I'm gonna cut this video off right here. Uh, I've spent a lot of time looking for parts and trying to figure out just how to do this job, to be honest with you. Uh, I had to figure out how to get the pinion apart and how to get the uh, differential carrier set out of the car, how to figure out how to create the proper tools. And I talked about a lot of that stuff along the way, and that kind of slowed me down quite a bit, actually. We got the uh, pinion assembly completely disassembled, and we got the pinion housing and the pinion flange all cleaned up, so those are ready to go. 
Uh, we are almost ready to start reassembling the pinion itself. Uh, I need to take this new bearing spacer down to a local machine shop and have that cut. And once I have that done, I can install that and get this pinion assembly uh, back together and I can get the preload set on that. And then we can set that aside and move on with the rest of the job. And that being the differential carrier set itself. And we've got this out of the car and took a look at the bearings. The bearings look fine. Uh, I think this whole rear end was just a little bit loose. We measured the gear case spread before we took this out of the car per the factory service manual. And we measured uh, about two thousandths. That was as good as I could get. Uh, I know that my, you know, my setup here isn't precise, uh, but I, I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, the factory spec says the gear case spread is supposed to be three to four thousandths when everything is under tension. And we released that tension and we only got two thousandths. So I think maybe this whole thing was a little loose, possibly due to age, possibly due to improper assembly to begin with. But it's getting a little late in the day and I don't want to start fabricating any tooling right now uh, to work on this thing. I need to start tearing this thing apart and that means pulling these side bearings off. We'll also need to remove this ring gear and we'll need to remove the uh, spider gears as well and inspect every single solitary thing while we're doing this. Uh, we'll need to clean everything in mineral spirits, get everything spotless, and then we can start uh, talking about reassembling this with all new bearings. Uh, in addition, I need to go back to Rock Auto and order a slightly different bearing race for the left-hand side bearing because it's supposed to be a smidgen thicker. So we've got quite a bit of work left uh, for us to do, but you know, we're gonna, we're gonna get there eventually. But I think I'm gonna call this a video for today. Hey, listen, I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy maintaining, restoring, and driving your classic Cadillac.